Hello guys and girls, how's it going? Screezilla here and I hope you're all well. And today I want to talk about torpedoing. Um, torpedoes not something that's generally done much in the game at the moment. We, You know, you might do the odd torpedo run, but there's not many naval maps, unless you play Japanese, that you're really going to come up against ships. Of course, there is Norway uh, for the Allies, where you will be going up against ships, and torpedoes can be quite useful. The P-108 is a really good little torpedo bomber for that, well, not little, but a good torpedo bomber, because it does carry three torpedoes per run, so it's really efficient in destroying ships. The problem is, though, at the moment, <clears throat> as it stands, ships are currently hit point based. Now, there's no confirmation of that, but it's pretty obvious when you actually play the game. Um, I'm sure this is probably going to change a bit when they start putting in the naval combat system. They're going to change AI ships a little bit. Because at the moment, it takes a certain amount of TNT to sink a certain ship. Whereas in reality, if you blow the bow off of a aircraft carrier with a torpedo, that's going down. Whereas if you hit it in the midsection, it's probably going to survive it. So hopefully we get segmented changes to AI ships once that comes through. But for the moment, for the time being, this is how it works. Now, one of the biggest problems with torpedo bombing is, as I say, the fact that the boats are pretty much hit point based. And that can really limit your attack on ships. So, for example, the Mark... Do, 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 do. What am I looking at? Mark... Well, I think it is British Torpedo, uh, which is the one that you'll get on the Swordfish and the lower tier planes, is a 702 kilogram torpedo. And really, it's only effective against cargo ships, fireboats. Sometimes you can get a destroyer with it, not always. Um, it can be a bit iffy sometimes with destroyers. It's really frustrating, even. Uh, the large landing ships, you know, sometimes they can survive a hit from one of those torpedoes because they're pretty weak. The other thing is they're very hard to use. Next up you have the Japanese torpedoes, Type 91s, um, Mod 2 and Mod 3. And the Mod 2 and Mod 3, you can use them for destroyers, things like that, uh, light cruisers. Um, you sometimes struggle with heavy cruisers though, so you need to sort of go for light cruisers, things like that. Then you have the American God tier torpedoes, the Mark 13s, um, and they will sink an aircraft carrier heavy cruiser. It, I think it takes two of them to sink a battleship from memory, but they will take out pretty much anything without any problem, which is frustrating sometimes. <clears throat> the other thing with those, of course, is they have a good drop speed, so you don't have to be going sort of zero miles per hour. But then you have the things like the F-200-450 and the F-5W, which are exactly the same torpedo. Um, and they are pretty terrible. Now, they have a good distance range of three kilometres. Well, I say good, it's, it's not the best, it's just slightly better than the Mark 12 of the British. But it has an okay TNT rating to it. It has... Um, just a bit more, it has enough to take out a light cruiser basically, but you'll struggle with heavy cruisers and the such. Now just here we're coming up for a torpedo run, and we're just going to pause right here, I'm just scrubbing off speed. Now when you're coming in for a torpedo run, you need to come in low and slow, and this is where it becomes problematic, because you need to drop a torpedo from um, the Italian slash German torpedoes, you need to drop them from 120 meters, which is just below 300 feet. You need to be traveling at 180 miles per hour, or about 100, 300 kilometers per hour. And that's, if you travel any faster, then the torpedoes will sink, will, will basically sink and not work. Now, when you're coming in, they've removed the marker system for realistic, so you have to do it all by eye. What you want to be aiming for, though, are the sides of the ships. 
Now you can do this by just using your tail almost as an aiming point. So you sort of get your tail lined up and you can aim to the side of the ships. Now we have some uh, British light cruisers here. So we've got a big row of them. So we should be able to take out three without any problem here as long as our, all our torpedoes are on target. So what we'll do now is we'll just slow it down a little bit and we will switch back to the camera and let's continue on. So when you're coming in for a torpedo run, as I say, you've got to scrub off that speed and that can be pretty tricky sometimes because sometimes you will overspeed because you're generally diving down. Now the other problem, of course, is when you're traveling this slow, this low and this close to a convoy of ships, there's going to be a lot of AAA fire. So you've got a very high chance of being pilot sniped. Now I've finally got to a speed where I'm sort of safe, so the first torpedo goes out and let's just switch to the free camera and as you see it's got a good trajectory it's going to hit the water it's going to dive down and away it goes perfect now we've got that on target to the left hand just uh, cruiser there now we'll switch back to player view and as you see now um, just using the front of my ship my plane was just getting the aim and this torpedo is going for the mid cruiser. I'm sort of aiming it towards this one here. The third torpedo is going to go towards this guy. So down it goes. And we're going to turn. And then we're going to swing our back around. And we're just going to get that target on sight. I can't remember which one I go for, actually. I think I just bug out and just go for any which one I can here. Um, but because these torpedoes have such a slow speed, they're such a short range, and they're just such a really crap torpedo, you have to be really careful with your aim and also how you use them. Now here we'll turn out, so we'll just go back to normal speed. So we turn away from the ships, and we're going to get the heck out of dodge. Basically, we've launched our torpedoes, and we're now running away. So... As you see here with torpedo view, we've got the torpedo coming in. Now we should have a couple of other fish in the water, but this one is the closest at the moment. And it looks like it's going to hit this guy in the side. So we've got one cruiser down. Second one's coming in for this middle ship. <coughs> nice and in the side, second cruiser down. And the third one will just take a little bit of time, but it's getting there. Now, as I said, these torpedoes are relatively slow. They're not the slowest, um, which are in fact the American torpedoes uh, with only 60 kilometers per hour in the water, third, uh, third cruiser down. So, all in all, a nice little torpedo run. Um, well, the slowest is actually the uh, Mark 15 torpedo, I think, it, uh, the American Mark 15 torpedo, which is 61 kilometers per hour, but it has an okay range. Um, the, Brit the American torpedoes have around five kilometer range as well, so they do have much, you can sort of safely drop them at static targets from farther away. One of the problems with the British, the Germans, and especially the Japanese, is it's only a two kilometer range on most of them and with that it means you have to get very close to get your targets hit the other problem of course is if there's a moving target now if you've got a moving ship you need to work out the speed you need to work out the speed they're moving the speed your torpedoes moving the lead and you know all of this stuff while you're flying and that can be very tricky so it's best to drop quite close to them to get a moving target Luckily on Norway, many of the ships are stationary. But as I said, you can only hit certain targets really with those torpedoes. Now it's going to take two torpedoes to take out an uh, aircraft carrier with, the, with anything but the American torpedoes. And that's really frustrating sometimes. Because... It, it's... With an American torpedo, it just takes the one to kill an aircraft carrier. With everything else, it takes two. And that, that can be really tricky to get off, especially if you're a smaller plane, because there are very few planes that carry more than one torpedo in the game. Um, 
there's the P108, there's the Catalina, um, there's the H variant of um, float planes for Japan. They all have multiple torpedoes. But really, that's about it. Everyone else really carries singles. And the majority of strike fighters strike torpedo planes, just carry the one torpedo. And the thing is, they weren't flying on their own. These planes weren't designed to just fly alone with torpedoes. They were designed to fly in a big group of planes with their torpedoes, attacking in mass. Basically, what they would do is that they would just launch a lot of torpedoes at an enemy flotilla. And that would cause havoc because they would fly in sort of two different directions, launch the torpedoes to meet in the middle. Enemy ships couldn't really turn out the way, there was no way of dodging them. Um, if you've played World of Warships, you know the sort of tactics in that respect. Uh, you'll see it a lot with enemy aircraft carrier players and destroyers if they're working in groups. You know, it's a really good way of doing it because it's very hard to dodge a torpedo. If you've got one coming into your side, you can turn left or right to turn away from it. But if you've got one coming in from the side and one coming in from the front, then if you turn left, you're going to get one torpedo hit you no matter what. So it becomes very, very tricky. The other problem with torpedoing, as I say, is the hit point value thing. And, and that's something that I hope does get fixed very soon. Because at the moment, you just... They're pretty useless. You know, if you're using any of the slower launch torpedoes um, you have to get so close to the ships you're at danger close range and generally you get shot down from that especially when you're fighting cruisers and things like that because they have a lot of anti-aircraft fire when you're in a big plane especially the p-108 here you're a big target as well so you're going to get a lot more anti-aircraft fire as well now we're just going to speed up here because we're just going to do a landing and then we're going to do a takeoff as well So in we come for the landing, just checking there's nobody on my six. Start scrubbing off speed. Not one of my best landings actually, because the problem with this airfield, there's a bump right here, just before the actual strip. And if you land on that bump, it launches you in the air. So you've got to come in really quite high angled, especially in a heavy bobber. And it's such an awkward landing here. Luckily the P-108 is a really nice plane to land, even when you're doing a real derp landing like this. Um, but you see that lip at the end of the runway, that really does cause problems when you're landing because you'll hit it and then you'll go launching up in the air and usually you'll fly sideways and end up hitting the tower or something like that. So what are some of the better planes to use for torpedoing in War Thunder? Well, as I said, the main thing is um, you want to have a good speed on the torpedoes. And really, you can't beat the Americans and the Japanese. I think it's the G4M1 as well, it carries two torpedoes off memory. But it's really nice because it has those good Japanese torpedoes. Now they've got a great speed to them as well. The Japanese torpedoes are very fast in the water, but they do have a very limited range. So we'll be taking off here. Away we go, we've got three fresh fish on the bottom of our plane. And we're going to head off towards those cruisers again. So we'll just speed up a little bit here. Now, what I would always suggest as well is if you've got cover, use it. So in this respect on Norway, we've got these mountains we can use. We can fly low and come over the mountains to the ships. And that means you're going to get spotted later by the enemy ships. You're also going to be able to get closer to them. It's a really good option. And it really does make life a lot easier as well. Um, now in this respect I could have gone for the aircraft carriers, but again, I would need to use two torpedoes to sink one of those, and chances are I would get blown to buggery by the anti-aircraft fire over there, because there's a lot of AA guns over on that island. It's a really... If you're after points, you will win the game as well, because you do take a lot of tickets out of the ship, but if you're after sort of that aspect, you're better off taking out enemy cruisers and things like that because you're going to survive a bit longer if you're on the allied team take out the destroyers um, 
and just because they do have a little bit less AAA fire. One of the, uh, as I say, one of the problematic things for torpedoes in this game is we don't have um, parachute torpedoes, we don't have um, torpedoes that we uh, that have good release speeds. They're just uh, the problem was many of the access nations, other than Japan, didn't really develop torpedoes. So the German torpedoes were pretty sarcastic, and this really does show because you know British planes as well they've got okay torpedoes but they're really not that good and it really does affect your ability to to use them in game efficiently so we're going to come in here and come nice and low the main thing i can suggest with torpedoes is just getting your aim right as well and that's probably the hardest part of torpedo bombing. As I say, luckily on this map we've got stationary targets which are very easy to kill because you can get a drop from a decent range and you're generally going to hit. Now one of the other things you have to do is get your um, maintenance, weapon maintenance skill up on your plane. That is really, really important because if you don't have weapon maintenance high your torpedo is going to drift and what that means is when it hits the water there's a chance it's going to drift to the left or to the right and this is really going to affect you at long ranges if you're trying to do a long range drop with torpedoes you're going to be really really buggered um, because it's going to just veer off to the left or to the right and just end up going somewhere you didn't want it to go so we're coming in nice and slow here there's the uh, aircraft, sorry, the landing craft over there. Now we've got two ships here. So we're going to try and get our torpedoes off. Now, one of the mistakes I actually made in this game was we will see here in a moment. Flick down. So we're coming in nice and slow here. And apparently I don't have any torpedoes on my plane, but I very much do. So there we go, I launched my first torpedo here. And as you can see, I've just launched it a little bit too soon. And it just starts to drift a bit. Now I'm actually interested to see what happens here because I'm not sure exactly what goes on with this torpedo. I don't know if it hit, if it was a dud or whatnot. So I dropped the third torpedo at that last ship. And everything's looking good. And now I'm going to head off and start trying to take out some of those um, landing craft. So away we go over there. Flying at low altitude using our guns. I'm trying to work out which torpedo actually failed here, um, because I know one of them does. I get a few hits, but we're okay. Now that, first, that second torpedo is going nicely into that cruiser. Boom, that's the end of that cruiser. And this torpedo is steaming along, steaming along. Oh, good. Actually, it did end up uh, miss. It did end up hitting. Okay, so it ended up hitting, but not destroying the light cruiser. Um, so the aim was just slightly towards the front of the ship. So, yeah, I really don't know what's going on with these. Like, it's really hard to work out. I think, as I said, it's really weird with how the ship's hit points work because. That was pretty much on the same target as every other torpedo I've hit so far. And as you see, it just did nothing to the ship. This one's more on the bow, so this will blow the bow off. That's pretty good. Um, so we ended up getting five kills. So now we're just flying along and we've got a hurricane coming in at us. 
very angry hurricane. So we start turning away from it, getting our guns on sight. We turn in so it can't get a strafe on us. We get a couple of hits on our tail, but things are good. Now we start spraying our 50 cows at him. And we get a nice collision there. And that's the end of the game. So let's just head back to the hangar quickly and just talk about torpedoes in a little bit more depth. But uh, sorry, bad pun. I'll stop. I'll be good. I'll behave. So, as I say, the I'm not sure if the French actually have a torpedo yet. Um, I don't think they do off the top of my head. Oh, no, they do. They get the Mark 13. So they they just get the American torpedoes because they've just got the American planes, of course. Um, so, yeah, the, the French have got the American torpedoes. Of course, because it's on the AD-4 as well, isn't it? Yeah, so the, the French have got the American torpedo, um, which is a really good torpedo. It'll take out an aircraft carrier with one torpedo. Um good range good speed and the main thing is its drop speed of 322 miles per hour is you can dive and drop really easily it's also got a good height drop as well the main reason for that is actually because if we look at it um it's got this casing around the torpedo you see this casing here there's a wooden casing around the torpedo and this smashes off when it hits the water breaks off um, and then the wooden box around the back here also breaks off as well and it just protects the fragile parts of the torpedo from that initial drop so it makes it survive a little bit better. Now the Italians, as we say, we've got the fantastic um, F200 whatever you want, well, 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 can't speak, 450s which are a very slow drop speed, very low drop range very low speed and not a great distance and also they've got a very low yield to them too they are pretty torpedoes though um the main thing is though these and the german torpedoes they have got a very low yield to them so you're only going to be able to kill light destroyers with them the japanese you will be able to kill heavy destroyers sorry heavy cruisers um i think the g4m1 carries oh it's just a single torpedo drop uh, but they've got the 91 Mark II and III. Now, the II is pretty good, but it's got a lower yield to it. The III has got the highest yield um, and is just a bit better in general. Uh, also, I think it's got a slightly uh, same drop range, uh, but it has got a higher drop speed to it. The main thing is they've got a good speed in the water, but they have got a low range because they're air-powered torpedoes. The British the glorious swordfish um you get the fantastic mark uh was it mark 12 i think i said it was yeah mark 12 um torpedo and horrible roman numerals forgive me but really bad drop speed really bad drop um altitude as well what the swordfish pilots used to do was actually fly around 3,000 feet and then dive pull up at the last minute and then drop that way uh, because the swordfish would be very slow anyway, even in a dive. And this was successful. I mean, these torpedoes were enough to screw over the Bismarck, so they did work, but they're very low yield. Same as the... Um, do, 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 what am I looking for? The Wyvern. Um, the Wyvern, the Firefly, things like that. The Mark 15. Um, the Mark 15, again, is an okay torpedo. It's got a bad drop speed, bad drop range, not great speed, but a decent range to it. Uh, it has got a decent mass, um, so <sighs> theoretically it should take out a carrier, but I've never had much luck with it. Um, usually heavy cruisers, things like that, will go down pretty easily, but you only have one of them, and that is very problematic. Um, the Russian torpedoes, yeah, they're, they're pretty awful. Um, the Russians were not known for their fantastic torpedoes. Uh, the 45-36 mans, um, you get two of them at least on the BE-6. But they've got a decent drop speed, but 
again they've got a low mass to them they're only really good for light cruisers things like that however having two of them you could take out a carrier with them king of the torps though are the americans um they say things like the catalina are just devastating with the two torpedoes you can take out two carriers um, which means that you can have two catalinas on a game and win the game with that on a naval map these things are absolutely brutal and they will take out pretty much anything. Um, so yeah, if you are looking to do torpedo runs, go American, in all honesty. You're going to have a much better option. Well, I hope you found this interesting, guys. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know your experiences with torpedoes. And also let me know your tips as well. Any tips you have for people using torpedoes, I would love to hear them. Um, as I say, it's all about learning and we're always learning something new. Torpedo bombing is one of the trickier and less used aspects in the game. When naval comes out, again, torpedoing is not going to be overly useful just because the AAA is pretty harsh. Um, but you will have success with some of the smaller torpedo planes. They will actually have a use again, which will be quite nice. Uh, torpedoes are always devastating when they hit a ship. Um, they are a thing that many sailors fear. Okay, guys, until next time, this is Screezilla out. Bye-bye.